Having a Jellyfin or Plex media server is a cornerstone of any home server. However, it can be tedious to manually add media, especially when trying to keep all your shows and movies up to date. In this video, I'll be going over how to set up an automated media server using the R stack. Once set up, you'll be able to simply search for a show, movie, and other media and automatically add it to your server. I'll have documentation to all the resources used linked below. I've also created a Discord server linked below if you would like to join to ask questions or simply discuss any tech topics. If you find these videos helpful, please like and subscribe. With all that out of the way, let's get started. The prerequisite I want to point out is that although a VPN is not required for this setup, I highly recommend you use a VPN if using torrents. The R stack can also be set up using Usenet, which does not need a VPN. However, we will not be using that method in this video. First, let's set up our data sets for the RStack configs, as well as all of our media data. Head over to TrueNAS datasets and create a data set for our media files. The structure of these directories is important for how the RStack will monitor our media. I'll go into further details on this later. Create a parent directory with apps dataset preset. Then create two children datasets for torrents and media, also with the apps dataset preset. Within these children datasets is where we will put our media data. Create datasets within torrents and media for all the media types you are planning to use. For example, I just have shows and movies. Make sure the substructure within torrents and media is identical. Once created, the dataset structure should look like the following. Next, we will also need datasets for our R stack configs. Create a dataset R with the app dataset preset. Let's then create a child directory for each of our R apps. For this video, we will just have Sonar, Radar, and Prowlar. Again, be sure to have the app dataset preset for the children datasets as well. Once created, your config dataset should look similar to this. Next, create a config dataset for PIA as we will be using this as our VPN. We will also create a child dataset for scripts make sure to have app dataset preset as well. Finally, let's create a single dataset for our BitTorrent config, again with the app dataset preset. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and create our PIA script. SSH into your NAS and navigate to the newly created PIA scripts dataset. We can then create our script using vim ports.sh. Hit insert to enter edit mode and paste the contents from ports.sh below. This script will take the port set by PIA for port forwarding and set that as our port within BitTorrent. This is not strictly required for the R stack to work, but it makes torrents much faster. Leave edit mode with escape and save the script with colon x enter. Now that we have our script, let's deploy our VPN and BitTorrent. Head over to Portainer or your Docker manager of choice and create a new stack or Docker compose. I'll have all the Docker compose and other files linked below. Let's go ahead and name our stack and paste in the VPN BitTorrent compose from below. This will deploy our VPN, in this case private internet access, as well as our torrent downloader. The main configuration to be aware of for our VPN is the mount path for our PIA config as well as the PIA script. Also be sure to make sure your PIA credentials and server location code are set within the environment variables. I'll have a link to all the available codes in the description. They are not very organized however, the codes follow the format of country underscore city. For example, I am using Vancouver, Canada with code CA underscore Vancouver. For the local network, be sure to use your NAS's local IP. We can leave all the other variables as is. Scrolling down for BitTorrent, make sure you set your mount paths for the config, PIA scripts, as well as the media data. I want to point out that the media data path is only for the torrents dataset we created earlier. BitTorrent does not need access to the entire media dataset, only the torrents. This will play a role in how the R stack manages our media. Be sure this is only mounted to the torrents dataset. One last config, you may wish to update the time zone to your desired time. Point out why these are deployed together. We ideally never want to have BitTorrent running outside a VPN. That is why they are part of the same stack, and we also have a condition on BitTorrent container to only deploy if the condition of the VPN is healthy. With all of our configurations updated, go ahead and deploy the stack. Once deployed, we can check each container logs to verify everything is running. Within the PIA container, 
we should see logs for WireGuard successfully started, as well as our port script running and the log for BitTorrent being updated. To verify BitTorrent, we can simply visit our local IP on port 8888 and verify BitTorrent shows up. If you do want to log in and configure torrent settings, the default login is admin for username and admin admin for password. We will not be going over BitTorrent specific configs in this video. With all that set up and running, let's deploy our R stack next. Back in Portainer or your Docker manager, let's create a new stack and paste in the R apps confos file from below. This stack is a bit simpler as we do not need a VPN for the R apps themselves. The main configuration to update will be the mount paths to the respective configs for each app, as well as our media mount paths for sonar and radar. Make sure the media paths point to the top level data set that has both your media and torrent data sets. The apps need access to both in order to manage our media. This will also allow us to save storage space by using hard links, which essentially allow files to appear in multiple places while only having one copy. If you want to learn more on how this works, I'll have some documentation linked below. Before we deploy, a quick explanation of what each app does. Sonar is used to manage TV shows, Radar is used for movies, and Prowlar is used to configure the NSYNC indexers between all our apps. Indexers are what our apps will use to find our requested media. For a full list of the available R apps and documentation, check out the links in the description. With everything configured, let's deploy our apps. Once deployed and our container showing is healthy, let's configure our apps. Let's head over to Sonar using our NAS IP and port 8989. When you first visit Sonar, it'll prompt you to set up a user and password. Go ahead and get those set up and then we can continue on with our configuration. Under Settings, Download Clients, let's go ahead and add a new download client. Let's go ahead and select BitTorrent, and we can set up our download client configuration. The main things to change is make sure that you update the host to be your local NAS IP, as well as the port for 8888. Another thing to update is make sure that we update the username and password. In our case, that'll be admin, and the password will be admin admin. We can leave everything else as is, we can go ahead and test our connection. And if we are have a successful connection, we'll go ahead and save our client. Now that we have our download client initiated, the next thing we'll need to do is set the general root path for all of our media. So again, under settings, if we go to media management, under root folders, be sure to add root folder and then select the data set that you created for all your media. Again, in this case, I only selected shows as sonar only will use all of the media within shows. While on the media management, configuration, we can also potentially update the way that Sonar names and categorizes all of our show titles. I won't go over that in this video, but if that's something you want to mess around with, it's in media management. Before moving on, go ahead and head over to settings, general, and be sure to copy your API key. This will be used later on to sync up with Prowlar. With Sonar configured, head over to Radar on port 7878 and set up the same configurations. Once that's complete, Let's head over to Prowler and get all of our indexers set up. Once we're in Prowler, the first thing you want to do is go to Indexers, Add Indexer, and then here we can search for whatever indexers we want to add. There's a lot of them available, some of them private, some of them public. I won't go into too deep of a detail on which indexers to use or the pros and cons. In this case, I've simply added some of the simple public ones, uh, for example, YTS. Pirate Bay, and BitSearch. So go ahead and add these indexers along with any others that you'd like, and then we can move on. Once we have all of our indexers added, let's go ahead and add our apps. So if we go down into Settings and Apps, this is where we can add Radar and Sonar. So if we go ahead and add a new app, you can select Radar, Sonar, or any of the other apps that you have. And for the configuration, the main thing that we need to set is make sure that we have the correct uh, URL for our Prowler server. The other thing is we'll have to update the IP and port for our radar and sonar servers respectively, as well as set the API key that we copied earlier. Once these are set, you can go ahead and test your connection. And if everything works out, you can go ahead and save. Once we have all of our apps added, let's go ahead and sync app indexers. So if we click the sync up top, this is generally pretty quick and we should see it completed down in the corner. Once this is completed, let's go ahead and head back to Radar, for example, and see what this looks like. So if we go back into Settings 
and then we go under indexers, we should now see all of our indexers added. The, this is the main reason we use Prowlr. Otherwise, we would essentially have to add the indexers manually within each of our apps, which can be very tedious and not really ideal. So with all that set up, now we can demonstrate getting some media. If we go to movies, add movie, we can search for whatever media we'd like. In this case, let's say I wanted to add Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor. I can search for that here and see that it's available. If you change this to be other movies, it'll essentially have a populated list where you can pick whichever movies you'd like. So if you go ahead and click on this, we'll see that it automatically populates our root folder. Uh, this is based on the root folder we set earlier in the video, as well as the naming convention that you set uh, within the media management. For most of these other settings, we can leave them as is. Uh, the main one to point out is the quality profile. So radar and sonar have a couple default profiles. Uh, in my case, I'll just select the 720p or 1080p uh, quality profile. And basically what this will do is uh, it'll make sure that it only downloads content that is within this quality range. So in that case, if we go ahead and add movie, uh, we can see that it's scanning for it in the bottom left. And you can see that it actually did found, find one. Um, so in that case, if we go back to movies, we can see that our new movie is actually popping up in our, in our list. And we can see that it's monitored. So if you go ahead and click in here, it'll give us a bunch of info on it. And eventually, once it's, everything is fully downloaded, um, we'll see that it actually shows up here as a file. As a final step, be sure to add the new shows and movies directories to your Jellyfin or Plex server. Otherwise, the media won't be picked up. With everything configured, we now have a fully automated media server. We can easily add shows, movies, and other media to our server. If you found any of this helpful, please like and subscribe, and comment with any questions. As a reminder, I also started a Discord server linked below if you want to join and ask questions or discuss any other tech subjects. Thank you for watching, and happy self-hosting.